So we're here at Zanzeskans and we have an opportunity to see several different kinds of windmills. Not every windmill was used to grind grain. A lot of them were used for things like pumping water or sawing boards or doing all kinds of other things. And we're going to have a chance to take a look at them. Okay, so this is a post mill. This is the type of windmill that would have been more common in the Middle Ages. It, it rests on a central post pivot, which is then able to rotate into the wind using this capstan here. Um, so, so rather than using water to drive a mill, we are using a mill to drive water. Yeah. <laughs> so this thing is, is then running a gear system that's pumping water from a lower place to a higher place. That's amazing. And that's how you drain a country. And that is how you drain a country. That's how you empty an ocean. The Netherlands are 50% underwater, and a lot of the original dikes and, and land reclaiming projects actually date back to the 1200s. Um, there's portions of Amsterdam that, that date from then. And so, devices like this or Archimedes screws on windmills, I mean... It's interesting. That means that 400 years before the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, people were literally moving oceans. With complex machinery. Yeah. Yeah. That's a heck of a thought. Yeah. It's a heck of a thought. You can see the water flowing out of here. The wind is going like bonkers. And there there it's pumping the water. I mean draining from here to here. And that all requires zero human power. Yeah. Do you know how magical that would be? That's like that's like compound interest is today, you know, like you put your money in the bank and then suddenly like magically there's just money at the end of the year and you didn't do anything. That's what this is. Is is you 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 work so hard to create that thing, right? And then we just sit here, uh, sit here yammering while the wind does all the work and moves water uphill. You can in fact push water uphill. Yes, you yes, can you in can. fact push water uphill. What amazes me is how smooth it is, and, and all the moving parts in this are going to be wooden. You can see that the blades are held in with wedges. See that? Uh, there's also bolts on that thing. Although I do see that the blades are held in with wedges. Gosh, that's fascinating. The, yeah, I guess they are held in with wedges. And then... And then to brace it. Keep the wedge from slipping. So there's actually not that much metal in that thing. No. So this windmill is dedicated to sawing logs, and you can see here logs from the river over there being brought over to this place where they're dragged up a ramp into the saw house itself. That dragging in is powered by the mill as well, and then they're sawn into boards, the boards are stacked and are left to dry. From 1600, you said? 1600, 1700? Yeah, 1650, 1700. Wow. And there were, in this area, were about 250 uh, oil mills. Wow. There were totally 1,000, but there were 250 uh, oil mills. And uh, did you see the, the wood sawing machine? For wood no. Sawing? no, we, no, we missed it. That. Yeah, too late. But that's very impressive. That is, is yes. very proving. And in the old days, uh, in, in our golden age, uh, um, we, we, the first time it was sawing by hand. And uh, for building a ship of wood, it takes five years. And wow. when, uh, when there was an oil, uh, one, uh, a wood sawing machine, we built a ship in one day. So we. Uh, one, one day? Uh, uh, one year, sorry. One, one year from five years to one year. So we had a lot of ships. Yeah. And uh, we had more ships than England and, uh, and France together in the Golden Age. Wow. I'm really interested in the way that they're describing this, that uh, the, the Zahn region is known for being the oldest oldest industrial region of Western Europe, and when we think of the word industry, at least I usually think of the Industrial Revolution, right? I think of factories, I think of steam, I think of coal, I think of those kinds of things, right? Like the, the whole grody 20th century, or excuse me, 19th century factory system, Charles Dickens, please sir, I want some more type thing, right? 
but here you have a kind of industry that, that isn't factory oriented. It goes back to the 1500s, right? So prior to the whole factory mess, whatever that is, right, the Industrial Revolution, you have systems of industry that don't rely on post-industrial revolution type stuff. It's a, you were mentioning it's a wind-powered industry instead of a steam-powered industry. Yeah, and the number of types of mills that we have, we have mills here that are processing oil, that are processing grain. Grain's probably the easiest one to think of. They also have sawmills, they have windmills that are processing flax, um, that are doing the beating process uh, of beating off all of the, the shives. Um, you, you have a whole bunch of water pumping windmills, like they, they're, they're many, many decentralized factories, whole yeah. bunches of them. And you know, that's really comforting to me because we've derived so much benefit from the industrial revolution, so much, right? Like the fact that you're holding this camera, the fact that we flew on an airplane to get here, right? Like all this we owe in large measure to the industrial revolution and to all the technologies that came out of it. And yet, I think there's a sense that you and I have, and that so many people have, that something also went wrong in the Industrial Revolution. Something yeah. deeply went wrong that, that needs to be fixed, right? And so it's so interesting to come back to the time period directly before the Industrial Revolution and see what they were doing with industry and see, okay, maybe they had a different way of doing things that we could figure out how to do today, like small-scale industry or something like that, that could retain all the benefits from the Industrial Revolution and heal all the harms. Yeah. And that's... It, it's deeply inspiring to me. So we could be cottage industrialists, not just cottage industry, but like to industrial. Cottage it. industrialists. Yes, I like that. It combines the the, the the intensity. It combines all the intensity of the industrial revolution with the scale of uh, of this kind of industry. Right. You know, maybe in some sense, I don't know. Right. Like these are open questions that we're investigating, but maybe in some sense, like this is the dream. Yeah. By the way, there's a duck at your feet. Oh, perfect. Is there really? Oh. There we go. See? Can't get over it. Can't get over it.